first of all, I think the curls are gonna be in full form today. All my curly hair girls, you know when you can just feel that it's gonna be a good curly hair day? I'm feeling that today, so hopefully it transpires. I went to yoga this morning and was feeling good, feeling strong in my practice. I think I've been doing a really good job trying to keep the vision as true north and express myself and remember what this journey into YouTube and showing up in this space is actually for. I mentioned in previous clips how it's really just about writing the highs and the lows and being present with where you're at. On Tuesday, I was feeling really, really anchored in myself, really anchored in my purpose. I had a little bit of a perspective shift. I think it's really easy to default to success in this space as being view count or subscriber numbers because those things feel real and they feel tangible. So of course, I desire to have as many people as feel resonant following along in this space. I desire people to see the content that I'm pouring my heart and soul into, but that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this to show up as authentically, as truthfully, as powerfully as possible and because I really do believe that I have something to say. Today I just woke up feeling a little less anchored in that belief. The ego, the fears, everything got to me a little bit. I just was feeling a bit down on myself, having a little bit of a pity party. I'm here to tell you that like sometimes life is going to be like that. It can't can't always be full steam ahead, endless stamina, unabashed belief in yourself. There are gonna be moments where you question the validity of the path you're traveling on. So I was already feeling a little bit down on myself, just trying to be present in that, just trying to really examine it, look at it, see what it was. And then I got my first hate comment. My instinctual reaction was, I'm just going to delete this comment, block this person, because this is a space where we're fostering community and we're fostering open conversation and space and inclusivity, reaching your dreams. Yeah, all sorts of just warm possibility. It really isn't a space for hate speech or for anger. I, and I should say misplaced anger, right? Or judgment. I really want this to be as safe a space as possible, not just for me putting myself out there, but also for the people watching and the people engaged in, in this content. I deleted it. I blocked the person. I moved on. But of course, those things are going to linger in your mind. And so the comment said something like um, one thing about, and they put my name in quotes and put to Anna, which I just think is funny, is that she likes hearing herself talk. One of the biggest insecurities that I have, one of the things that I'm always ragging myself or kind of smacking myself on the wrist for is being too long-winded. It's just been something that I've noticed in dialogue with my friends at a dinner table. My ego will frantically ask, did you take up too much space? Were you talking too much about yourself? I just think it's really interesting and funny that this person picked up on this. At first wanted to be really down on myself, like, oh great, well, you know, I'm already feeling like what am I doing in this space and now this person comes here and leaves these comments on my channel, what else does that say about me and about what I'm doing? But then I of course took it to my pages, started journaling about it. I don't even say this to be above the comment or anything like that, but what I came to was like, I know, A, I've silenced myself for the last 15 years and put myself in this pristine little box, trying not to like to hear myself talk, trying not to take up too much space, and that wasn't working for me. So yeah, I do like to hear myself talk because I spent the last 15 years silencing my own voice. And you know what? I have a lot of shit to say. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And the more that I dove into this and stripped back the layers, the more I was like, and yeah, you know, I know this is more about that person than it is about me, but also it kind of felt like affirmation that I was on the right path. I believe there is something deeper inside of me, something that's sacred, something that's powerful, that longs to be woven into the fabric of 
this world. And clearly that person saw something powerful and sacred in me as well because they wanted to use their words, use what semblance of power they had to shut that down, to make me feel insecure about it and to prevent me from speaking my truth and showing up. And you know what? It was on my How Do I Realize My Dreams video, which was really a video in support of, in communion with you all, something that I wanted to offer the world to bring people closer to their own divinity, their own sacred power, their own internal flame. And it just is interesting to me that that person was so afraid of that inside of them that they felt that they A, witnessed it in me and felt that they needed to shut it down. Could that be an egomaniacal way to look at it? I suppose so. I think where I landed at the end of it all was that maybe I am on the right track after all. If I am stirring somebody, moving somebody so much that they felt they needed to show up in this space and actively try and shut that down, then they recognize that what I'm doing holds merit and power too. I don't know, I think everything in life is a mirror, is a learning lesson, and so I'm arriving to this space with a little bit of renewed hope that maybe something is clicking into place even if the signal that that is so wasn't packaged as honor or glory or praise. So yeah, I just wanted to chit chat a little bit about that and just kind of reinforce the idea that we're here for the collective. We're here for everybody's growth, everybody's evolution, everybody's advancement, everybody's joy and success. If you do feel inclined to share your opinion in a judgmental, hateful, spiteful way, I'm just not gonna tolerate it. The boundaries I've set around this channel are sacred and I'm not going to allow people to rain on other people's parade surely not my own so if that's something that you feel compelled to do maybe this isn't the channel for you <laughs> anyways I'm going to continue on with my clarity right for this morning as always thank you for listening to me talking <laughs> It has been a very exciting mail day. Gotten some really fun, cute packages, but the one that just arrived in the mail, you guys are gonna be like, am I experiencing deja vu? And shut the fuck up already about this boba tea protein. But if you explored, went to the boba tea protein website, you'll know that their stuff sells out so quickly. The last time I ordered, they only had the classic milk tea available. They just released more flavors. You know, I had to get a new flavor. So we are fully on the jasmine tea protein game. And I also got their lychee pre-workout. I'm not gonna try the pre-workout today because I've already worked out. I don't need the caffeine, but I am definitely gonna try the jasmine milk tea right now. Luckily for me, this time I already know how to make the boba teas, and so it's not gonna take a million years, and I already have boba balls made. Still just smells like protein. Mm, let's see. You guys know the drill. It's four ounces water, four ounces milk, blah, blah, blah. For these protein shakes, I've just been doing the almond milk because it's less calorie and for this it doesn't really matter because everything just tastes like the protein powder once you've made the boba balls i just keep them in like this tupperware this glass tupperware and then i just scoop a little bit out and then you can just reheat them in the microwave for like 15 seconds at a time really easy 15 seconds are already on my microwave it's like they knew i was gonna need a boba i hate with protein powders, finding the scoop, because you have to like dig your fingers through all the powder. Okay, here we go. One scoop to the concoction. Since you guys have already seen me do all of this, I'm just gonna speed up the process and taste it and show you if the flavor is as good as the original. Since I'm getting ready to go, I just put it in this travel yeti. Okay, moment of truth. Mmm. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, yeah. I think I might like this one better than the classic. Wow, new flavor. I really do think this one's better than the classic. It tastes more like boba. That's lovely. I love a floral jasmine tea. This is what I usually get at boba shops. Win.
That is a win. Okay, you know, we always have to get Sam's judgment critique. It's good. good, huh? It's better than the other one. I know, it's so good, right? The bubbles aren't that good, though. Well, I didn't heat them up very good, so yeah. don't don't hate on those. Uh, yeah, I agree. We'll have to try the lychee pre-workout, too. Little outfit check before I am out the door. I am wearing this thrifted blue men's button down that I always wear. I actually think I might have been wearing it the last time I tried boba tea, so it probably feels like deja vu. My thrifted Levi 505s, my Prada boots from The Real Real. I'm carrying my little dragon diffusion bag that I got for Christmas that I love. And then I'm just pairing it with these Celine sunglasses that my stepdad actually bought me and both Sam and I really love them. Sam and I are getting ready to go to my friend Chelsea's book launch event. It's at a restaurant in town called June, which is owned by Chef Sean Brock, if you know him. He has Joyland, Audrey, he's a really amazing chef here in Nashville and Chelsea's doing a collaborative event in celebration of her book launch. So I just wanted to do a little outfit check. I'm wearing this jacket because it's a little chilly in Nashville, but I'm actually wearing this Rachel Comey shift dress top that Chelsea actually gifted me, um, so I thought it was appropriate for the occasion. And then my pants are this kind of like satiny Marina Moscone, really fun fabric. I'm wearing my Amina Muwadi heels, and then just a little thrifted bag, and all the same jewelry that you always see. I don't know what the protocol is gonna be at the event for filming, or how intimate it's going to be, so I don't know if I'll get to film a lot, but hopefully I'll get to show you a little bit, because it's bound to be really, really special. Good morning everybody! I am en route to the nail salon because today is nail day. I don't know if you see these, but I have a few broken nails and they're just sad and tragic. My toes are in an even worse state. So we're definitely gonna go get those fixed. We have a wedding this weekend in Minnesota and we have another one next weekend in Palm Springs. The wedding is in Joshua Tree, but we're staying in Palm Springs a couple of days before. So we're leaving on Wednesday. We get back Sunday, we leave Wednesday. So it's gonna be a couple of weeks of busyness and chaos and so I'm just trying to get some things out of the way before I go nails Botox things like that it's supposed to snow like four to eight inches so I'm really not looking forward to that but I am looking forward to celebrating with everyone I'm gonna take you into the nail salon and show you my process nails are something really fun for me I have a whole highlight section on my Instagram about it I'm really particular about colors it takes a long time for me to pick and I'm just picky when it comes to my nails as you should be there on your fingers people see them all the time so typically I have two people that I see so I have a nail salon in Nashville that I really love when I want to do just like kind of standard um, like good solid colors and then I have Annie whose Instagram handle is gel high and she does all sorts of fun nail art and rhinestones and she's the best but I like to do fun nails like every other month I was supposed to get my nails done on Friday but I'm a dingus and didn't realize that we were leaving for the wedding on Friday so I to reschedule and flip-flop so I'm I have like glitter on my nails right now I don't know if you can see that which is pretty plain I got them done at Allure which is where I go to and so this time we're gonna do solid nails again maybe a little French chip with a little color I don't know we'll see what happens when we get in there out of the nail salon and I wanted to show you what I got in the lights so that you could see the reflection. We just did like thin blue French with a little bit of chrome too. Oh and then on the toes we went for yellow. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. One thing my friends always say about me is that I'm really good at asking for what I want at the nail salon and I think it's because I've mastered the art of doing so. Another view of the nails if you want to see. She really did what she could with these bunk nails, so I'm really happy about that. But just a little subtle with a little something something. Here's my tip for asking what you want at the nail salon. 
A, I'm gonna lead with what I always lead with, be kind, you know. These women are doing a service for you, they're helping you feel beautiful, so always lead with kindness. Even if they may not be kind to you, I, I always just think it's, you know, good practice to lead with kindness. One thing I always do is, well A, don't be afraid to ask for what you want and speak it. So today I was like, I think I want French with this blue, and she was like, okay, and I showed her a picture and I said, I want them thin like this, is that something you can do? And the biggest tip I have is to make the process collaborative ask their recommendations ask their suggestions even if you have an end goal of something that you want to get to you can guide them but if you make it a collaborative process it feels more like a collaboration more like an artistic process than just you telling them what to do and you don't know what they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis rude customers people who are brash and mean for example with my nails I was like I really was loving the French chips and everything was looking good and she was already going above and beyond for me but I knew I wanted to add the chrome on top. I just posted it as a question. Do you think we should do a little bit of chrome on top? And she was like, hmm, I don't know. And I was like, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think it would look good? And she offers her opinion and I was like, I think it would look great. Let's just at least give it a try. And we added the chrome. So just make it collaborative, make it fun, realize that these aren't just people providing you a service, they're real human beings. But also don't be afraid to ask for what you want because you know, you're leaving and they're gonna be on on your nails so want to make sure that you get what you want that's my little tip for the nail salon I am gonna head to UAL if you don't know what UAL is it stands for United Apparel Liquidators we have three locations here in Nashville and they're interspersed throughout the south in Texas Louisiana places like that and it is a liquidation company so I know that sounds a little cheesy when I say it but their liquidation is all designer stuff anything from like Chalusha and like more niche brands to Bottega and Gucci and things that are more expensive. It is a gold mine when it comes to shopping and I love looking there for occasion wear. So I've already checked two of the locations in town. The biggest one on West End Avenue is really close to my house. I love looking for occasion wear from them. They have really great luxury and contemporary designer dresses, sets at a really affordable rate. So I haven't been able to find anything at the other two locations which is really surprising because they're in resort wear right now and I'm looking for dresses for Palm Springs, but I don't know. I just haven't been really loving the way that my body is looking in things, which is interesting for me. It's not usually one of the insecurities that pops up so prevalently in my in my forefront. So we're gonna try the third location on Hillsboro Pike or in Hillsboro Village and just see what they have. They're also bringing out their swimwear, which is my favorite UAL season. It's like one year I got like six hundred G's from UAL for such an affordable rate. It's all brand new, all beautiful. If my camera doesn't die, I have the red blinking battery. I will show you a little bit of what I find, but otherwise, we'll just see you at home when we get some looks together for the weddings. I just recorded a video all about journaling that should be up before this video goes up. It came really smooth. I hope that the information's clear. I always feel really insecure about that. And I hope that you can hear me because my door is open and my neighbors are doing God knows what. But it was fun. It was fun to talk about something that I'm so passionate about. I am home from UAL. I secured two dresses. I got the Chow Lucia one and the one from Dream Sister Jane. I came home straighten up the house a little bit because we're having a doxeter come stay at our place to watch Pete so I just want to make sure it's like nice 
for her. <laughs> and now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to put together some looks for the weekend. So because I got a dress for the wedding that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wear, I don't necessarily need to figure out what that looks going to be. Two days after we get back from Minnesota, we leave for Palm Springs and Joshua Tree for another friend's wedding. And I got a bunch of vintage pieces at the Nashville flea market. I actually went specifically for my friend Quinn's booth. She's been doing a lot of furniture recently recently but she decided to come out of retirement and do vintage and she has the most impeccable style so I wanted to go see her booth and I got some really fun different things for me so I'm gonna try and incorporate those in the looks for Palm Springs. When I was shopping for these weddings, you know, I think there's always this urge to get something new because it's new and it's shiny and it's a hit of serotonin. While I'm definitely 100% guilty of that, I did get plenty of new things. I also just kept hearing this message over and over again that like, it's in your closet, Tiana. It's in your closet, Tiana. I think I just need to give myself enough time, space, energy, and effort to actually create looks. So for that, I am going going to Pinterest, but I'm also going to go back and read some of Sabrina Hayink's. I think Hayink. I'm really sorry, Sabrina. Not like she's watching it, but her newsletter, it's called, Are You Wearing That? And she was a vintage curator for years. She has the most beautiful taste and style, and I really respect her opinion. She single-handedly, like, just through her newsletters, made me a better dresser. She might watch this and be like, girl, don't, don't be saying you're learning from me, but I really just love her style. It is very adjacent to the things that I like. I'm going to look at her newsletter as well just to see if I can get any inspo, any ideas. I feel like you could probably see the nails better now. Let's see. There they are. They're like little blue tips with a little bit of chrome too. I love them, love, love, love. Let's get started packing. I feel like I'm ahead of schedule, which is a really weird occurrence for me, but I will take it. It's actually quite a bit later. Ugh, please ignore that mess. I had to pick up Sam from golf and then I went and grabbed his lunch and then I just spent a few minutes on TikTok. You know how it goes. I'm finally getting together looks for this wedding and maybe even Palm Springs. So I think I did show this at UAL, but this is the dress I ended up getting. And I like this little like pearl detail at the top. I decided to pair it with these. I think they're Amber Skeets. They're also from UAL. I wish I had like just a simple pearl. I think that would look really nice, but I don't. So I feel like these ones complement the dress nicely and then I'm gonna pair it with my Amina Muadis as well it's gonna be really cold it's supposed to snow I'm also gonna have to figure out a coat look and how I may or may not be able to pack that in a carry-on so we'll see how that transpires you can see the room is getting progressively messier as I try on more clothes but I think because Friday is supposed to be cold and snowy I'm gonna try and keep it pretty casual I don't have to go to a rehearsal dinner or anything like that it's just at a brewery so I'm gonna do just my black Zara trousers I wear these with literally everything I'm gonna do the same shoes since I am trying to keep it to a carry-on and then I'm gonna do this thrifted cotton it's just like a black mock neck because it's warm and my Zazie vintage coat this is also a UAL find and it's one of my favorite coats and I'll probably just wear this onto the plane tomorrow so that I don't have to like pack it or anything because it is really heavy but I think it's gonna be the one thing that keeps me warm so at this point I'm pretty much packed for Minnesota and I'm just kind of playing around so that by the time I get back for the wedding in Palm Springs I can just already start having ideas of outfits I want to put together in my head this little vintage shop was one that I forgot about from what's that place called live true in Old Hickory Tennessee she has such good stuff it is like a little over the top but I just love that it has like that feminine fun I just like fun pieces. It might be a little much, but I kind of love it. I paired it with these white, just polyester pants that I've shrunk a little too much in the wash. And then my lock sandals. I liked the little like contrast. It just felt like a little more oomph on the bottom, but it's just kind of fun. We're just playing around here. This is one that I got from my friend Quinn at her booth at the flea market this weekend. And I am obsessed with it. I paired it with these little sunglasses because I just feel like chic. Like I'm on a yacht. <laughs> she picked it out for me. I was like, what would you wear if you were going to Palm Springs? And she was like, oh, I love this piece. It's like Calvin Klein mom. And I was like, heck yeah. It has this like skirt, but it just fits me really well. And I love, I don't know, it just hits in all the right places. So I don't even need much for this. I haven't even put on shoes. I just paired it with these little sunnies because I look like I'm 
a rich mom, but I love this piece and it's definitely gonna go with me to Palm Springs, obviously not to the wedding, but for romping around California. It's a definite. I jazzed it up a little bit. This is just a sunglasses case, but I like the little pop of color. I'm wearing my Bottega sunglasses that I got for Christmas. They're green and I wanted a really fun color because my friend Jenna has these blue sunglasses that I'm always fiending over. I love the green, but it's a little hard to style, so I feel like this is the perfect outfit. And then I just paired it with some strappy locks. I thought like all of the boxiness on top needed something a little more dainty and elegant on the bottom. I think this is a Palm Springs must. Part of the reason that I got this Chow Lucia dress at UAL was because I really liked this like skirt style. I figured I could make it a skirt, which I did. I'm not going to pair these two together, but this is another top that I got from Quinn. I love it. It's just like this silk striped top. It definitely feels Palm Springs. I think you're supposed to wrap it, but I just tied it because I thought it was a little more modern. I'm not going to pair these two together, but I don't really know what pants I'm gonna wear with them so just wanted to show you both I love I feel like this skirt is definitely like feminine and what I've been looking for so I really love that I also got this skirt from Quinn another just like silk I think the brand is Louis Ferrard and it feels very Palm Springs it has these like slits in it which are really pretty again probably won't pair these two together it's a lot of pattern going on but look at her and her feminine era skirts this I'm kind of of into let me zoom you out I just paired the top with my jeans you know my perfect fit Levi's that have a little slouch to them maybe I will go ahead and like wrap this I don't know but then I paired it with my MNZ Olympia wedges the jean length might not be quite right but then I just did a little straw bag I have a bigger one from Doen that I would probably pair it with but this is cute like just like a casual romp around outfit I'm kind of into it with some fun earrings so there's been a lot of white so far I forgot I also got this patterned Chow Lucia dress I just think the fit is so good and it's red my color and I just love it so I'm definitely gonna wear this we could throw on the lock shoes again we could throw on the MNZ Olympia wedges my favorite thing is like a Chow Lucia dress and like an indie shoe like an MNZ or lock shoe. That one's definitely gonna go to Palm Springs and Joshua Tree. It just feels like an easy breezy pop it on and you can go. Also, if you hear things in the background, I'm watching Daisy Jones and the Six for the second time through. I'm obsessed with it and it's like a comfort show for me. So it's playing in the background. Okay, last thing I got is another piece from Quinn and it's this yellow jacket. I can't decide how I feel about it. It's definitely not something I would usually go for, but Quinn has such impeccable taste. And she was like, that jacket was made for you. She said she would pair it with some really blue denim and maybe some loafers. Definitely thinking it's a cute fit. It has some shoulder pads in it. I don't know. Maybe I'll take those out. I do like the detailing. It feels special. That's why I was like, okay, let's go for it. But don't know if it'll make the Palm Springs cut. All right, y'all. I am literally so tired. So I am going to straighten up a little bit, pack a little bit more. I've already straightened up the house. I have to vacuum and like clean the bathroom and things like that, but I'm thinking that can wait until tomorrow. So Sam is at an actual puncture. He's at an acupuncture appointment right now. And when he gets back, we'll probably go sit outside somewhere with Pete since it's nice out and just chill the rest of the night. So thanks for packing with me.